right. So you've been digging into all this nitro module stuff yeah. for React Native. And honestly, there's a lot to unpack. Oh, yeah. There's a ton. We've got GitHub repos, some code snippets, even conference talk notes. It's a, a lot. lot, right? Yeah. So we're going to try and like deep dive into all of it. And by the end, you'll know like the essential things to know, like if nitro modules are something you should be using or just a cool tech to like watch from the sidelines. It sounds good. Okay. So let's start with a why... Like, why did Mark Yousavi, the creator of Nitro, even embark on this journey? Right. I mean, we actually have some insight from Mark himself from the React Native Radio podcast, episode 310. Yeah. So from what I understand, he was hitting these roadblocks with existing tools, you know, like turbo modules and expo modules. They were fine for the basic stuff. But when it came to handling, like, complex data types efficiently. Right. They just weren't cutting it. Yeah, like trying to send an image from native code over to JavaScript. Mm -hmm. It's a huge chunk of data. Exactly. And Mark was talking about having to resort to these clunky workarounds, like encoding images in Base64 just to make it work. Right. Which is not ideal. Not ideal at all. And it goes beyond just like practicality. Yeah. You know, there's been this buzz about wanting to use Swift more in React Native development. Mm -hmm. Well, Mark's vision for Nitro aligns perfectly with that. He wants Swift to be a first-class citizen in the React Native world. No more second-class status for Swift. Exactly. I like it. So how does Nitro actually achieve this? So one of the core concepts is something called hybrid objects. Okay. Think of them like JavaScript objects, but they live on the native side, so you'd write them in like Swift or Kotlin. Hmm. Okay. I think I'll follow you. Can you give me a real-world example? Like, how would I use this? Sure. Remember that React Universe coffee talk where they were discussing image thumbnails? Yeah. So imagine working with a UI image, right. which isn't just a simple text string. You know, it's an object with properties and methods. Right. With Nitro, you can treat that UI image in your JavaScript code as if it were a regular JavaScript object, okay. even though it's actually living on the native side. Interesting. So I can call methods on it directly, access its properties, no more hoops to jump through. Exactly. With Nitro, you can pass around those UI image objects super smoothly and efficiently, no more messing around with messy base 64 encoding. Okay, now that's what I'm talking about. And speaking of efficiency, let's talk speed. I mean, Mark threw down some pretty impressive benchmarks in his React Universe talk. Oh, he did. Nitro was like 15 times faster than turbo modules and a mind-blowing 59 times faster than expo modules for a simple function call. Well, hold on, 59 times. Yeah. I know benchmarks can be tricky, but that's a massive difference. Is there something fundamentally different about Nitro that makes it so much faster? Well, part of the secret sauce is that Nitro bypasses a lot of the overhead you find in traditional approaches. Right. For instance, it utilizes C++ optimization and Swift direct interrupt, which avoids those extra steps involved with Objective-C. Okay. Plus, there's lazy loading, which essentially means it only loads what's needed when it's needed. You can think of it like ordering takeout instead of cooking a five-course meal every time you're hungry. Yes. Yeah much faster and more efficient. Okay, so there's some serious engineering magic happening under the hood, but let's be realistic. Most of us app developers don't want to be messing around with C++ or optimizing memory management. That's where nitrogen comes in, right? You got it. Nitrogen is Nitro's built-in code generator. Yeah. It's like having this super efficient robot assistant that takes care of all the tedious work for you. Robot assistant. I'm listening. <laughs> So remember those old Turbo Modules tutorials where you had to write a ton of boilerplate code to connect your JavaScript to your native code? Oh, yeah. With Nitrogen, you just define your interfaces cleanly in TypeScript, mm -hmm. and Nitrogen generates all that native scaffolding for you automatically. So like those tools that generate front-end code from API specifications. Okay. Less room for error and always perfectly in sync. Exactly. How, how does that compare to like the old Turbo Modules workflow? Night and day, if you watch Oscar Franco's videos on turbo modules, it all feels so manual and prone to errors. Nitrogen takes away a lot of that pain. Okay, so nitrogen is a huge win for library authors, but what about me, the app developer? I'm probably not writing these native modules myself, so what's in it for me? You benefit from all the amazing libraries built with Nitro. It's like getting a free performance upgrade just by using these libraries. Okay, that's fair. But are there even any libraries using Nitro yet? I mean, it's still pretty new, right? It is new, but it's gaining traction fast. You've got Filament, a powerful 3D rendering engine that's using Nitro. Okay. There's Vision Camera, React Native, MMKV for blazing fast storage, and React Native Unimodules. And if you look at Mark's past talks, like the one in London on JSI limitations, right. he was already hinting at this tech unlocking features that were previously impossible in React Native due to performance constraints. Hold on, let me write this down. Filament... 
Vision Camera, MMKV. These are some serious tools. And that's just the beginning. Things are definitely heating up in the Nitro Modules world, but before we get too carried away... Hold on, are we saying this is the future of native development and React Native? That's a big statement. <laughs> It's a big question for sure, and a perfect point to pause for part one of our deep dive. Right, we've covered a lot from the motivation behind Nitro to these hybrid objects and the magic of nitrogen. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. We'll be back with part two, where we'll explore the existing Nitro landscape, what challenges and opportunities it presents, and what you, our listeners, should be paying attention to. Stay tuned. Okay. So we just established that Nitro modules have the potential to like really shake things up and react native. Mm -hmm. But let's get real. Is it all sunshine and rainbows? Are there any like downsides or challenges to using this new tech? Well, it's important to remember that Nitro is still pretty fresh on the scene, you know? Right. It's not officially supported by Meta yet, so there's always a chance that things could change down the line or that it might not be compatible with future versions of React Native. That makes sense. <laughs> so it's more of a consideration for, like, library authors than for app developers, I guess. Exactly. If you're just using libraries built with Nitro, you don't really have to worry too much about the inner workings. But if you're the one building those libraries, you're putting a bit of faith in Nitro's future. Okay. Fair point. Hmm. What are some of the other things to consider? Well, Nitro relies heavily on code generation, remember? Nitrogen, our trusty robot assistant. Yeah. Well, while that's great for handling all that boilerplate code, it also adds a layer of complexity to your build process. If you're not familiar with code generation, it can be a bit of a learning curve. Yeah, debugging generated code can be a real pain sometimes. Hmm. But hey, maybe that's a small price to pay for all the benefits Nitro brings to the table. True. And let's not forget about the ecosystem. You know, it's growing rapidly, but it's still young compared to the existing native module system. So you might not find a Nitro library for every single use case just yet. So a bit of patience is required. But even with those considerations, there's still a lot to be excited about, right? Absolutely. Nitro is opening up so many possibilities. We're already seeing these incredibly innovative libraries popping up, like the ones we mentioned earlier. And as more developers get on board, I think we can expect even more awesome tools and libraries to emerge. My mind is racing with the possibilities. Yeah. Okay, so let's say I'm an app developer, not a library author. How can I start, like, exploring Nitro modules today? The easiest way is to start using those libraries that are already built with Nitrofilament Vision Camera MMKV. There are great examples of how Nitro can unlock these powerful features and performance. So I just download those libraries, install them in my project, and I'm good to go. All that Nitro goodness without any extra work. Pretty much, you might need to install the React Native Nitro Modules package as a dependency, depending on the library. Okay. But that's usually it. That's amazing. It's like getting a free performance upgrade just by updating a few libraries. Yeah. But what if I'm feeling a bit more adventurous and I want to try building my own Nitro modules? Where do I even begin? The Nitro modules documentation is a great starting point. Okay. They've actually redesigned it recently. It looks fantastic. Oh, cool. It walks you through the basics of setting up nitrogen, defining your hybrid objects, and everything else you need to get started. Sounds like a fun weekend project, but let's be honest. We're all busy people. Mm -hmm. If I just want to get a taste of Nitro without committing to a big project, are there any quick wins I can try? Absolutely. One simple thing you can do is just grab the code for one of those pre-built Nitro libraries and just poke around. Okay. See how they're using hybrid objects, how they're structuring their interfaces. It's a great way to learn by example. I like that little code safari adventure. What else? You could also try creating a, a very basic Hello World Nitro module. Okay. Just a module that exposes a simple function like say hello. Right. This will help you get familiar with the basic workflow of setting up nitro and nitrogen without getting bogged down in complex logic. Okay, that sounds manageable. No 3D rendering or complex camera logic. Just a simple greeting, even I can handle that. I have no doubt you can. And who knows, once you get comfortable with the basics, you might be inspired to explore more advanced concepts. Maybe you'll even contribute to the nitro ecosystem yourself. You're getting me excited now. But before I go off and build the next killer Nitro module. Let's shift gears a bit. We've talked a lot about Nitro's potential, the performance improvements, the better developer experience, but what about the bigger picture, like the broader impact on the React Native ecosystem? That's an interesting question. I think that's something worth exploring further. Right. Where does Nitro fit into the grand scheme of React Native? How might it shape the future of the platform and its ecosystem? We've got a lot to unpack there, and I think that's the perfect place to jump into part three of our deep dive. All right, cliffhanger. <laughs> Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. 
All right, so we've explored the what and the how of nitro modules. We've even dipped our toes into the practical side of things. But now let's zoom out and like look at the bigger picture. Where does nitro fit into this whole React Native landscape? It's a fascinating question. Remember all those conversations we've had about React Native's performance limitations, especially with like complex features? Well, Nitro has the potential to be a total game changer. I mean, just look at those benchmarks we discussed earlier. Exactly. Nitro unlocks performance that we could only dream of before, especially for things like 3D rendering or image processing. It's exciting to think about the possibilities for like building more complex and performant apps with React Native. Absolutely. Things like high fidelity games, augmented reality experiences, or anything that requires serious horsepower could become much more feasible with Nitro. We might even see a wave of new libraries and tools specifically designed to leverage Nitro's capabilities. The Nitro powered renaissance of React Native innovation. I like the sound of that, but hold on. What about the existing native module systems like Turbo Modules and Expo Modules? Are they going away? It's hard to say for sure. You know, it, it's likely they'll coexist for a while. Remember, okay. Nitro is still new and it doesn't have official support from Meta yet. Right. There's that whole ecosystem momentum thing. It takes time for new technologies to take over especially when they're already established alternatives. Exactly. And those alternatives are also constantly evolving. The React Native team is continuously improving turbo modules and expo modules are popular for a reason. It's more likely we'll see a mix of different approaches, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. So a diverse ecosystem, which is a good thing, more options, more innovation. Yeah. If we imagine a world where React Native apps are buttery, smooth, complex native features are a breeze to implement and developers have this incredible toolkit at their fingertips that's the promise of nitro modules right it is and while we can't predict the future with certainty one thing is clear nitro is pushing the boundaries of what's possible with react native it's a testament to the creativity of the community and a sign of exciting things to come oh, you've certainly given me a lot to think about i'm feeling inspired I might just have to fire up my code editor and start tinkering with some Nitro modules myself. That's the spirit. And hey, if you come up with something cool, share it with the world. Absolutely. And to everyone listening, we hope this deep dive into Nitro modules has been insightful, informative, and maybe even a little mind-blowing. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep pushing the limits of what's possible with React Native. Until next time, happy coding. Oh.